Who are the most toxic Asian females? This TikToker recently went viral for ranking all of them, and you won't believe who's at the top of the list. Yeah, we got a review, another banger from our friend Fooligan Kevs. Oh, she did the, the list about the most toxic Asian males. Now she did one about the most toxic Asian female rankings. Woo! This one's a spicy one. And I'm gonna tell you this, man, it's funny and it's stereotypical. But a lot of people agree with it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I've read like 500 comments, and there might have been five that went against her. So theoretically, that is a 99% comment approval rating. Well, Dave, I'll tell you this. As the fun grows, we love ourselves in Asian list. So we're going to play the clip, and then we're going to break down her results, uh, break down what she said, too, and see if we agree. So please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Fooligan Kevs, let's run the clip. Let's first preface this with that all women are toxic, specifically the Asian ones. It's just toxic in different flavors. As a rule of thumb, East Asians are more inwardly toxic, whereas Southeast Asians are more outwardly toxic. And I'm not gonna speak for South Asians because I cannot relate, and that would just be inappropriate. What do I mean by inwardly toxic? East Asians have facades and layers. They're like <laughs> on the outside. But on the inside, it's oh, anger. Oh, what a kill. Southeast Asians are outwardly toxic, meaning outwardly they'll burn your house down. And on the inside, they're also fucked. So, on the bottom, we got Chinese. They're quite practical. I've never heard of toxic Mongolians. They're so chill. Repping for the Southeast Asians are tires. They're quite unproblematic. We're getting now to the Japanese. It's all about respect. But inside there are tears. Next is Korean. They're quite in the middle between not as toxic and toxic because you don't know which one you're gonna get. It's like a surprise. I'm not a geography teacher, so I don't remember all the countries in Asia. So I'm gonna just put Malaysian around the Koreans because you just never hear anything too bad about Malaysians. Let's go to the top, Cambodians. I am terrified of ever messing up with a Cambodian because I know that my car will get keyed. Let's go, Philo. Filipinos have anger issues. The top one, Viet girls. They are psycho, but in a good way, but psycho. And I'm very afraid. Hey man, this went viral on TikTok, man. She's got a knack for it. I mean, uh, these breakdown lists are funny, right? Yeah, and I feel like for us, you know, uh, not that this validates what we're going to say, but we have been around a lot of different types of Asians. We've dated different types of Asian women. I feel like I feel like in every big city that we go to, we are seeking out the Asian community and trying to check it out, whether it's Boston, Philly, we went to Houston, we've been to San Jose, OC, San Diego, Seattle, yeah. Portland. Those don't always make it in the food crawl, but we, we'll be hitting the club, Asian oh, clubs. No, <laughs> trust me, we're out there, guys. I mean, I can uh, name We you. have met many... ABG bottle yeah. girls of many different backgrounds. And by the way, in this list, okay, just to be PC with everybody, she's essentially referring to different types of Asian girls you might meet at the club. Like these right. are the type that are kind of like more of the baddie group of their series. Not, they're, she's not talking about 100% of these Asian women. She's probably talking about a certain segment that like to go out, have fun, kind of cute. And you know, I think we yeah. have to be clear here too. In, in 2023, I feel like it's a little bit, I'm not saying it's the same, but it's sort of little like the word ratchet. The, the, the meaning has changed. Oh, of Cause toxic, Because the, right? the word toxic... That's bad, right? It's bad to inject anything toxic into your bloodstream. It's just that you can almost or, use the previous definition that was prior. I think it's changed since then. It's just negative, right? But I almost feel like it's what? Is it moved to more like what? Manipulative, more street style, more but, volatile? But, but you know, David, there is this connotation with toxic. When you say someone's toxic, it means that they're kind of attractive too. And kind of fun too. Kind of sexy too. They have some positive qualities, but overall they might not be good for your life. But anyways, guys, <laughs> let's go through the list and let's talk about what she talked about. Well, Anna, her first statement was, first off, I've got to say that all Asian women are toxic, but they are toxic in different flavors because they are from different cultures. I think that's true. That's funny. Different that's funny. cultures and different immigration patterns and upbringings, they generate different outcomes and yeah, different personality sure. sets. Obviously, I mean, the, Listen, even ethnicity and bloodline 
and DNA aside, it's just like culture. A lot of it's culture. Yeah, if you're from a different type of family, like if your dad's a professor, that's way different than your dad being a gangster or yeah. something like that. I mean, like, listen, a Cambodian professor versus a Chinese gangster. I mean, what do you, they, of course they're different. Right, right, right. So she says that East Asians are inwardly toxic, whereas Southeast Asians are outwardly toxic. What that's do you really think of this statement? That's funny because East Asians are known to be like the stoic ones. They keep it within the family. If they are toxic, they don't communicate as much. They keep it inward. They don't really project out onto other people or relationships as much. Um, but yeah, Southeast Asians, they're way more expressive and they're just more like outward with it, right? Like they're just kind of, uh, I feel like they're- I mean, it has to do with climate too. I feel like yeah. hotter places, they're more expressive, colder, snowy places. That's the stereotype, Yeah, right? I think they're all Asians, right, David? They're all like civics. We're all Honda civics, but one's East what? East Asians would definitely be the electric civics. And then I would say that Southeast Asians would be the combustion engine civics. More with the gas. It's hotter. It's ex explosive, man. I mean, I would say it's almost like just way more like the valves. Like if we're all robots, Andrew, we've got like different sized uh, steam valves on us. I think the Southeast Asian valves for releasing the steam or expression are just way bigger. We're all rice cookers. Mm. Mm. And you got different steam valves for the rice cooker. And guess what? I would say this. Southeast Asians generally seem to have... They either let out steam more often or they have a bigger valve for steam because they know how to like kind of release dopamine and have fun and also release, you know, emotion more often than like the average East Asian, I would yeah, say. Yeah, no, Chinese, uh, specifically, I'd say Chinese struggle with expressing expressions. Yeah. Anyways, let's get into the list, David, because starting at the bottom of the list, of course, she said <laughs> Chinese people were at the bottom. She said Chinese at the bottom, very practical people, not really too much toxic. <laughs> um, you know, some people said, I'm Chinese, I could confirm. Chinese are only toxic within their family. Somebody said, wow, as a Chinese girl, I wanted to cuss out my partner, but just due to the way I was raised by my parents, I just couldn't do it. She couldn't release the steam, bro. Guys, Chinese C stands for compressed, all right? Ooh. Chinese are compressed people. We don't show our emotions too much. I think they have them, but they just don't know. They don't, just don't release them in, in the ways that other people do. I almost want to say, Andrew, if Chinese, if all Asians were like Gundams or like Jaegers, you know, we'd be the V1.0. We'd be like the first Jaegers they made Dang. because that's sort of like, you know, the oldest Asian. And it's like, we got some small steam valves. Dang, are you, are you when, when they built us, we got some small oxytocin diameter receptor steam valves. Are you saying we're the rice cookers with the tin lid, with the metal <laughs> lid? <laughs> Just a little hole just got built a little too small. Um, I mean, I think we're hyper pragmatic and, and it borders lines uh, possibly, you know, just seems out. out also, old I think school. Chinese, like maybe not entirely a super religious group, but I think the things that Chinese worship is like work and money, like making money. Assets, yeah. Yeah, and just pragmatism and just like living like a very stable, you, solid life. Yo, honestly, I thought this, that comment about. Chinese toxicity is usually within the family. I was like, oh, I got to think about That's that one. one. That one That's hit me. One. Moving on, Andrew, next uh, least uh, toxic Asian women is Mongolians. I think it's interesting that Mongolians is on the list because I don't know how many like Mongolians she knows. I, I know some, obviously. I've but. started to meet a lot more people or women in the Mongolian diaspora recently. Like growing up, you nobody even, yeah. even knew one, maybe unless you grew up in Chicago or DC, but now I feel like there's a lot more. David, you have dated... I don't want to say how many, a couple Mongolian girls in your life. What is there? Can you, what is your opinion? I would say I give them not like definitely different than other Asians, but not too toxic. A two yeah. and a four, maybe the four or the five. One came more I, from I the think, Russian I side. I think it's because they're very humble too. But even though Mongolians can't have a fire. Yeah, for sure. What do you think about this comment? Yeah, Mongolians are just chill because they know they peaked at Genghis Khan. That's funny. Yeah, that's, that's funny. funny. That messed up, man. Hey, man. But, you know, Mongolians, honestly, they, they take the joke pretty well. Moving on, Andrew. Next, uh, ranking lower, you got Thai women. Kap kum kab. What do you yeah. think? She said Thai people generally pretty chill, and so are the women. Honestly, uh, they are the lowest ranking on this list that are Southeast Asian. And I think that that makes sense because Thai people are just so nice and respectful. I don't know why. Thailand itself is kind of a wild place, but right. still everybody's like pretty nice and hospitable Dude, I mean, there. it has to do something with the ex uh, uh, very strong Buddhism that they have, right? They're yeah, never were, yeah. They never were colonized. It's got to, yeah, man. So I would say overall, man, I mean, you listen, you got to see Muay Thai matches. People are busting each other's heads open with some elbows and then they just you know, thank each other. Or they just respect. even kneel to each other. If I beat yeah. you too bad, Andrew, and we're too tight, I might just 
bow to you out of that. Yeah. So, no, I don't think they're very toxic. Moving on, Andrew, we got Japanese, where she says, uh, you know, Japanese women, they kind of have, like, mousy little voices. <laughs> but she said, she said, but you do not know what they are thinking deep down on the inside. They're possibly hiding their displeasure. I am from Japan. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I... I, I I mean, I this know. is a common stereotype, right? The Japanese have the outside face and the inside face, and they're completely different, right? Yes. Because they have a concept of wa in their culture, which is harmony. It basically, J Japanese society expects people to hide their true feelings to maintain social harmony and safety. I think it is tough because I personally cannot confirm that I've seen a lot of Japanese women be toxic because there's not that many Japanese people in America, to be honest. But we have been to Japan. I've been to Japan, but I don't want to start comparing like Asia to Asian America. I just want right. to, I just want to compare the Asian diaspora that you meet at the big nightclubs right. in major cities. So I, well, I guess what about Sally Nakamoto, the fifth generation Japanese American? I don't know. From, from I, the Bay it's area. so hard for me to judge the Japanese one. I'm just going to say that they're pretty low though. Yeah, yeah, probably pretty low, but definitely they got some interesting cultural historical things you could look into. There's so many websites. Now, on David, it. before we get on to the next one, which is Koreans. No, we're in the middle point now. But I actually think there's a big jump between Japanese and Koreans. Yes. In my opinion. I yes. think like, yes, they. I agree with this ordering, but I, I think the space in between the two on the, on the scale is big. Just speaking from an East Asian perspective, I would say that Korean women are by far considered the most expressive and potentially emotionally volatile East yeah. Asian women, right? Yeah, and I think it's because uh, I think Koreans, they, they like to spend time with each other. They build the K-towns and they have a lot of clubs. They love to interact. They do love each other. They love their nation. They love being Korean. So of course, the more interactions you have with each other, possibly the more toxic interactions you have. Right, right, right. They have intense interactions. I noticed like they have intense love for yeah. each other and intense, what the love can easily, you know, you revert, vice versa, yeah. it, it's hate too. I, I Whereas like Chinese, it's almost like they don't love each other and they don't hate each other. Everything's in the middle. Yeah, no, I mean, I, like drunk out at party, I've seen like Koreans like cry with each other and be like, oh, I love you. And then they'll like, like the next weekend, they're like fighting. So I'm just like, they're just more extreme what, people. What do you they think about what she said? When she goes, you never know what you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates. You don't know if you're going to pull out a caramel one or a fudge one. I think if I had to say maybe the Korean women who are from Korea, the immigrants are a little bit less crazy yeah. than the Korean Americans. I heard from some Korean immigrants that they're like, no, like Korean Americans, like they're like different. You know, they, they act a little different. So I don't know exactly why that is and maybe this is an entirely another video but i think there's a quite a big difference yeah well i guess you just look at bts very wholesome and then you got jay park which is more edgy right ABC, yeah. and uh, jesse uh, o um malaysians she said i just put them in the middle i didn't really know like too many malaysians honestly i think i i don't agree with this rank i think malaysians should be lower yeah i don't know anything toxic about any malaysians malaysians are actually pretty chill i actually more not maybe to the level but like more like thai yeah and i would also okay because she didn't include this group on the list indonesians i would put them around the malaysian group do you think it's complicated because there's malaysian malay, uh, malay people and then yeah. there's uh or indo indos like javanese yeah, and then yeah. there's like chinese indos and chinese malaysians yeah yeah and then there's also singaporeans who are also blood wise essentially chinese uh, for the most part, unless they're Indian Singaporean or Malay Singaporean, but yeah, I mean, I would I would group those three together here. I don't see too much toxicity from them, at least the ones that I meet in America, and yeah. even the ones in you know, I don't know. No, I've been to uh, Jakarta. I would put them more low. I would Dave, put them I more mean, low. Listen, we've spent time in Kuala Lumpur. We've been to Penang. I've been to Jakarta. We spent many t many trips in Singapore. I don't think. I would not say they're toxic. You guys let me know, man. What, what was Nikki talking about? About high school in Jakarta. Uh, <laughs> but I think she was talking about a white guy in that video. Anyway, what? moving on, Andrew. Um, we are more towards the high end of the toxicity scale. Like I said, this is not my list. This is full of game Hey, Andrew. guys. Take no offense to this. Come on. You I, already know what's coming. She has... Cambodian. I'm very scared of messing around with a Cambodian girl because I know that my car will get keyed. Oh, man. <laughs> Because obviously this is more, I feel like toxicity in the modern 2023 version is more like, just like, just with the ish. You know what I mean? Just like, uh, ability to get turned. Let's say if I was going to organize an army of one group of Asian women to fight another group, 
I wouldn't be mad if I got all Cambodian girls. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, they would know. They would in not. General, like if something choking. volatile was happening, they would probably wouldn't be like, "Oh my gosh, I don't know. I've never seen it." Like, yeah, no, they've seen some stuff. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, they're yeah tough. for sure. Tough. No, honestly, it might be worse than getting your car keyed in America too. Shout out to all the Campbells, though. Hey, man, I'm just saying, man. Jumbody up soy. Yeah, jumbody up soy. Um, moving on to Lau Andrew. She had Lau in her second revision of this video, mm. but um, yeah, she said, you know, I don't know too many Lau people in Australia, but. I'm assuming that any place that was colonized by the French produces craziness. That uh, was actually, hey, that was like, she was getting historical with that's it. That's a funny input. I would say it depends on the Lao family, I think, for this one. I've met many, many chill Lao people. Um, I have met some pretty crazy ones. But I think it really depends on the family and what, to be honest, I think when it comes to a lot of this stuff, it's like, what did the family go through? Right, and I think right. if the family had a more tumultuous kind of like, uh, crazy. Well, there was a, let's be honest. Let's be honest. In, there was a lot of civil wars in yeah. in uh, what the French yeah. were controlled. French Indochina. Yeah. And there's a lot of moving around. There's a lot of refugee status. So I think that changes your whole attitude um, about the whole thing. So yeah, I think um, I think it heavily depends. She on said, that. "Nah, whole time we the craziest for real." That was a loud girl, and uh, she's hot. I don't know. I'm just saying a lot of these girls that were really proud of their toxicity ranking were dude, hot and dude, had tattoos. I'm just saying this list is actually who has the hottest, most toxic... Badass girls. <laughs> Asian girls. Badass ABGs. Who knows? Yeah. Who has the most toxic, hot girls? That's actually it. That's uh, This is the list. That's what this list is about. Coming in, Andrew. We're at number two, Andrew. Oh, ooh. She said, then we have the Filipinos. Yeah. I can cite this as a Filipino. My fellow Filipinos have anger issues. And there was a whole host of comments uh, from a lot... I'll just say it, hot Filipino girls who they confirmed it. Hey, Filipinos, in the comments down below, let me know how you feel about being number one on the most toxic Asian guy list and then number two on the most toxic Asian girl list, all right? Because you're, you're ranking high. I think they like it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, really, uh, I think that Filipinos are, they like to have fun. I think they like entertainment. Maybe the drama is entertaining. I think they are a little bit more... Latin and Westernized than a lot of other Asians. Right, right? historically, they, look they, at it, right? Yeah, they speak a lot of I English. Like, I think they like to ping with each other just as much as they like to sing with each other. Ooh, pinging and singing. Yeah. Yeah. But also, I think that there's something about their interactions that is like kind of filled with drama. I'm not going to lie. The first time I was in high school, Andrew, and I went to this uh, house party where, you know, there was some underaged alcohol consumption. I just remember seeing like girls do, uh, I don't even know how I should say this, the triple kiss you know how they're all like mm. making out with each other, but like in a formation. Very, very, very fun. Yeah. I fun was at a times. Filipino party. Anyway, moving on, Andrew. Hey, David, the Panois also like some joy. So they, they like everything. They have fun together. They too. like some dopamine, man. Yeah. Uh, moving on, Andrew. Last but not least. Well, actually, not, of course, not the least. She ranked it as the most toxic herself, Andrew. She said, the eight girls are psycho, but in a good way. But they are psycho. Make no mistake. No, ma. <laughs> uh, I guess. I think here's my explanation. All right. When it comes to where does the word ABG come from? Where does Asian baby girl come from? It from it comes from the primarily the Vietnamese community, San Jose, Orange County areas. Don't That's forget about Bel Air, Houston, yeah, man. Houston Don't too. sleep on that. That's where it comes from. So I'm saying they are the true epitome of ABG. Okay. They seen a lot. They do a mm. lot. Also, I feel like Vietnamese girls, very high powered. I see them working out, getting very buff. I also see them working like two jobs, running like three eyelash businesses, and then they go back and be a bottle girl. And then they got like, I don't know, like they're just very like, man, Viet girls got energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, those are the only girls that you meet at Encore Day Club that like look like an ABG, but they're still like a pharmacist. Yes. Or like an eye Yo, doc, optometrist or something. They are the hottest pharmacists, honestly. Oh, hands down, man. Yeah. You think you getting your medicine in a in a bottle with some sparklers <laughs> and the little sign that's like turn her, turn her. Um she said, honestly, this is true. Even the five foot two no tattoo little beat Viet babes are psycho. So you can even imagine how the taller ones that are tatted up are. Yeah, I, I think from all my Viet friends, man, there's just like, you know, when I have to release my emotions, man. I'm just being me. I'm being free. And then it's like in America, this is a free country. Like yeah. you gotta be yourself, and, you know? And, and when we say, like, toxic, I don't even think it's bad. But, yeah, for sure, I think due to probably history and the things that V has seen, they're just like, hey, man, you don't know when tomorrow is ever going to come or not, man. So yeah. you got to live for today. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, Andrew, there was a lot of comments saying, V it here, I can confirm all true. And I got to say, Andrew, all the girls look uh, tatted 
fun and very hot. ABGs. ABGs confirmed it, guys. Yeah, and a very difficult to probably I, get with. I'm us. sure the non-ABG Vietnamese girls are like, no, why? Vietnamese girls shouldn't be up there. We're good girls. But you know who they're talking about on this list. Come on. <laughs> right. They're talking about not you, you know, your cousin. Uh, not talking about the Viet's <laughs> who went to Harvard. Okay. Um, what do you think about these comments? I mean, some people said, I gasped, laughed, then agreed. These were hilarious cultural generalities, but I kind of agree. Like, you know, this, there was a lot of comments in this segment. Yeah, dude, these are fun stereotypes, and, and we, we love ourselves a fun Asian list, too. And I think that, I think what's good about these lists is that it, it makes people a little bit more self-aware, and it does kind of remind people how, like, the average person thinks. You right. know what I mean? And yes, they are talking about a specific group of people, a type of women, you know, the women who would go out vaping at the club, which is all types of Asian women at this point, by the way. Right, with some so, sort of like 5,000 yeah. puff bar yeah. at, at Encore Day Club. That's it, the best. It's, it's honestly just who has the most toxic women who go to the nightclub. That's right, it. Right. Yeah. Somebody said, uh, nah, Hmong women, uh, American women are crazy too. This was a Hmong guy. So he he's looking to get mm. ranked higher. You know, some people wanted mm. representation. Uh, this guy said, a harsh but fair list. Taiwanese women just hate being... Asian altogether mostly. Uh, so they're East Asian and toxic in that way, but not in the way that you were talking about. Dang, this guy came in out of nowhere, had to throw the, the curveball <laughs> at Taiwanese people. Yo, I, don't, I, I don't, I'm not... I kind of... I'm not, I'm not sure if I agree. I don't listen, know. man, I'm just saying there was this whole thing with Madame Jen Kai-shek and it's sort of coaching to join the West and it can manifest itself in some All right, guys, Wu and Lane Chow type of ways. Everybody in the comments down below, I think, let me know what you think about Taiwanese people. I think the Taiwanese... Uh, I don't think it, 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 it the T doesn't stand for toxic. I think it stands for like tiger parent where they're like, they might have really high standards. Yeah. I think, I think I they're, they're trying to really be very calculated about climbing whatever ladder is put in front of them. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, somebody said pretty on point love in uh, crazy and love is always fun until it turns out to be just crazy. And the fun fades away. Somebody said toxicity is like spice level. Only a few can be strong enough to live with the spiciest. And this guy took it even further and said, man, Southeast Asian girls can burn my house. Dan, the toxicity's worth it, especially in the bedroom. If you know what I mean, uh, these comments, some of them are more crass. Some of them are more indicative of another thing. Andrew, what does it mean that people are actually want the toxicity? Because if you go by the old definition, right? Toxins and uh, toxins are bad in your blood or whatever. But people love drinking alcohol because it lowers inhibitions, even though technically that's toxin in your bloodstream, right? I think it just depends on what you want out of life. Like if you're somebody who needs stability in your life, uh, well, I guess there's, there's stable women of all groups, of course. But I guess... Um, yeah, obviously the rankings is for like the club going women where, yeah, you might meet like of the Chinese girls who go to the club, maybe they're, if you meet them all, like they're not going to be, have as much of a crazy side, right? They're not Usually have they were not the ones twerking on stage at arena. Yeah, right, 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 right. So I guess that's the whole point. What I think that it kind of depends on what your life requires. Like, dude, if you're yeah. young, I can see why you like the toxicity. Right. Just, and like I said earlier, toxicity kind of has also a positive connotation too because it means that you're attractive and you're kind of sexy and people like you and you have the leverage to be toxic. And would it also say that it just tickles a fancy that a non-toxic girl sometimes for certain guys cannot tickle? Yes. Guys, you have to almost, to be honest, you have to be somewhat desired to be toxic. Right? That's the truth. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the section below. Like we said, we were just reviewing the video from our, our funny comedian, you know, down under, Fooligan Kevs. We're going to link to her in the, you know, the comment section. Please let us know what you think of the toxicity Asian female ranking. Watch the one that we did where we reviewed our list of the toxicity of uh, Asian male ranking. Like we said, these lists are just fun. They're stereotypical. We get it. But, you know, maybe there's something you could take away from it, too. Let us know what you think. Until next time, we the Hop Hop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.